Now, last year, the inaugural Durban Under-19 International Football Tournament took place with Santos being the winners. The City are once again ho going to host this eight-team tournament where 16 matches will take place over 10 days. The event starts tomorrow and will run until the 8th of August. A South African Under-19 side and a selection from the KwaZulu-Natal Academy will compete against the likes of Arsenal, AC Milan, PSV Eindhoven, Galatasaray, Stuttgart and Glasgow Celtic. Now, a man that has played for teams in Russia, England, Pretoria Giants, uh, Mamalodi Sundowns, Vitz, as well as Bafana Bafana, Matthew Booth, is the tournament ambassador. He joins us this morning. A very good morning and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, what a lineup. Absolutely, yeah, and it's uh, gone from strength to strength. Um, there was definitely a, a Latin feel uh, last year with um, both Santos and a team from Portugal in the final, but now um, all six teams um, that are going to come to our shores are from, from Europe, so a little bit of a different feel uh, this year, but um, some outstanding academy teams uh, that are that are going to be playing in Durban. I mean, just how important are, are events like this? It's extremely important for our development. Um, I think under 19, in particular under 19 level, because uh, there's a definite link between junior and senior football at under 19 level. So for our lads to get that uh, international exposure at this stage is, is you can't put a, a, a sum to it, you know. Yeah. And, um, Hopefully it will filter back uh, down to under 17, you know, etc. Um, because we're in desperate need of, of tournaments of this uh, stature. Many tournaments have the goal that they want to help to identify talent and talent identification. And it seems as if it's quite an easy term to throw around. But why is a tournament and the way that this specific under 19 tournament is set up best placed in order to actually achieve that talent identification? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I think it's, it's easy to um, put plans and, and, and write them down, but to actually implement them is a different story. And I think uh, the organizers have done a fantastic job, especially with the KwaZulu-Natal Select. Um, they've gone through some rigorous trials throughout the province. And I think this is a, a model that um, other uh, metros and, and cities can replicate throughout the country. Um, so you're going to be seeing the cream of the crop from KwaZulu-Natal and then, of course, our very own under-19 national team, uh, which will be coached by, coached by Thabo Senong. So you're going to be seeing basically the cream of the crop that South Africa has to offer at under-19 level. And I know how excited everybody was with what happened and what transpired at last year's tournament. It certainly was very well received. Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously, when, when you have your inaugural uh, tournament, you're a little bit nervous about the, the buy-in and the response from the public and the teams, but it was absolutely fantastic. As, as you can see, it's attracted, uh, if not stronger teams uh, yeah. this year. So um, the success has, you know, hopefully it will, will gain a lot of momentum and, and go from strength to strength. Uh, Matthew, I'm going to change of focus now. Uh, what have you been up to? At the tender age of 38, I'm a student uh, now. So I'm studying through UNISA um, okay. and um, I'm doing a bit of TV work. Um, myself and my wife, uh, I do a bit of coaching at, at junior level through our trust, which okay. myself and my wife uh, run. So having thought that I, was, I would retire and have a bit of free time, I was mistaken <laughs> um, because I'm still kept uh, pretty busy. Yeah. Okay, so what are you studying at UNISA then? Are you going to hold it against me if I tell you? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing politics. Uh, not that I'm going to use it. But, uh, Why politics? What an interesting decision. Well, we live in South Africa, so uh, okay. I think uh, it's important to keep your ear to the ground. And uh, I've always wanted to keep up with um, the conversation and know what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so I don't want you to wear your political hat here, but I really sure. want your honest opinion because there's lots of thoughts and lots of rumours that go around about player salaries. And obviously, during this specific transfer window, it's been a major concern and a point, a talking point with Itumale and Kune still not knowing exactly, well, rather as a public, we don't really know where he's going to be going. And all of it, it goes down to salaries. Now, as the public, there are many that believe that footballers are played paid way too much and then there's others that really try to dispel that. What, what actually is going on? Well look, um, you know, to be honest, I think um, Itu is, is coming towards the end of his career, if I can say that, or he's in his prime and he realises that his next contract um, has got to be a big one. So I think he's gone all out. I think he's perhaps bitten off uh, more than he can chew. I think it's the first time that I've heard Sundown say that a, <laughs> that a player is too expensive. Um, so, you know, once that happens, you've got to uh, kind of reset your, your, your asking price. And I think that's what he's um, had to do. 
He's, it's most likely he's in talks with Chiefs at the moment. I don't know what his situation is, but certainly he's a fantastic talent and I would love to see him here in the PSL still. Whether it's at uh, Chiefs or Sundowns, it uh, remains to be seen. But generally, uh, you know, when Sundowns came onto the market with Patrice Motsepe, um, he wasn't very well liked by the likes of Chiefs and Pirates because he really upped the market value of, of players and their salaries. Um, and Chiefs and Pirates have very cleverly sort of kept their, their salaries. And I think that was the way to go. Um, but of course, with the big DVD deals and with uh, Mr. Motsepe coming on, 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 on the scene, that certainly has upped the, the, the salaries of the players. And it was much deserved, but I think there's got to be um, a shorter range between you know, what, what players are earning at the bottom end of the scale and what players are any, earning at the top. I think the gap is far too big still. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm going to ask you on air, will you come back and have another discussion about this? Because I think it's a, it's, it's a bit multifaceted. So maybe we'll invite you again. How much time do you have? Of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay. Because unfortunately, we've run out of time for, for today. But uh, I will definitely invite you again to have a little bit more of a discussion about this because there's definitely a gulf in between and there's certainly a disconnect. But great. And one awesome tournament that's coming up in Durban. It's going to feature the likes of South Africa's under-19 team. It's a leg team from KZN. Arsenal, AC Milan, PSV Eindhoven, Galatasaray, Stuttgart, as well as Glasgow Celtic. And that is the tournament that Matthew Booth, Booth is, of course, the uh, tournament ambassador for. Okay, let's get you.